Hi everyone, this is Ram from Instramatica Global Customers Party. In this video, we will see how to generate dynamic XML files using hierarchy builder, transaction control, and Flow P2P or ISAs. The agenda of this video is overview of hierarchy builder or the transaction control transformation followed by a quick demo. So, hierarchy builder transformation, as we know, it converts a relational input into a hierarchy link. So, the output can be an Avro file, JSON, ORC, Parquet, and XML data. So, before using a hierarchical transformation, you have to create a hierarchical schema which defines the structure of the output file that you are expecting. And the same hierarchy schema you have to use at the hierarchical transformation. This I will show you at the demo. And coming to a worry of transaction control, as we know, transaction control is an active transformation. That means it, the transaction gets changed for a set of records. You can change the transaction for a set of records. So that's the reason it is active transformation. Use transaction control in order to commit or roll back the transactions for the transactional targets such as relational XML. So in our, in our video, we are going to see with an XML and Amazon Redshift and REST V2 targets. You can also write the data to multiple files based on the transaction condition. That means if you want to dynamically generate the flat files, multiple flat files, then you have to use a transaction motor. That is what we are going to see now. And it is used to commit the data at certain intervals to prevent the data loss. And transaction control has below options, commit before, commit after, rollback before, rollback after, continue transaction. Commit before in the sense that whatever the transaction that happened, so you commit it and then continue, open a new transaction. So this is basically to open new transaction and rollback before is also rollback the before transaction and then open new transaction. So if you use commit before or the rollback at the transaction control, then for example, if you have 100 records, so for 100 records, there will be 100 transactions. So that's the use of commit before and the rollback before and commit after. That means insert the records and then co commit later at the end. You can commit and roll back after in the sense insert the records and if you want to roll back like after certain uh, 10 records or 20 records if you want to roll back the records then you need to use roll back after the continue transaction continue transaction in the sense don't change the transaction you just continue the transaction so that's the use of this in our like in this example we are going to see commit before and the continue transaction let me show you a quick demo this is a mapping which contains a hierarchy pillar and the transaction control see so this is my source so source is a relational data and product code quantity. So these are the eight uh, fields that I am going to pass from the source file. So this is my source file product transaction control input.txt. Let me show you that file. And this is an input file that I am going to pass. You can see product code is one and product code is two. That means I am using product code as a primary key from my source file and this is the data that I am going to pass and purchase order.txt. So this is an XST file that I have used in order to create and hierarchical schema. The same hierarchical schema I have used at the hierarchy builder. And this is an expression. I am just using an expression just to create one O underscore file name port. And this is having product underscore code and then dot XML in the single code. That means this is a string on whatever the input. So it, I wanted to generate one dot XML, two dot XML. That means for every record, I want to generate a dynamic XML file. Okay, so that's the reason you have to uh, go with the one expression, so product code. If uh, in my source file, so product code is a primary key, so that's why it will generate a new transaction for every record. But if you don't have any primary key in the source, then you can use one variable port where it will generate, for example, count, o underscore count, where it will increment the count value based on the a new record. And incoming fields, the same fields I am passing. Hierarchy builder, I am going to uh, use the same hierarchical schema which I have created as just transaction purchase order. So, this is a hierarchical schema that I have created and field mapping. So, the same field mapping I am going to pass to all the fields. And if you see here in the field, uh, output settings, you have to enable pass through fields uh, because from the expression transfer, because output fields will be uh, only one, one field will be an output field. So, if you come to transaction control, incoming fields, you can see output. This is coming from the hierarchy builder. But if you want the one underscore file name as well, from the expression transformation, you have to choose pass through fields, which is the uh, best option we have at hierarchy builder, enable pass through fields. If you don't enable this, then you won't get the one underscore file name to the transaction control. Now, coming to the transaction control, 
you can see there will be five options as I mentioned commit before, commit after, rollback before, rollback after, continue transaction. So the first option is field value changes. That means if the incoming field, so which field underscore file name, that means if the file name, that means if the product code gets changed, okay, underscore file, that means one dot XML. So first it will be one dot XML. If it changes, then what we have to do? If value, field value changes, then commit before. That means commit the transaction and then open a new transaction. That means create altogether a new file. If the field value doesn't change, that means if the second record is also product code one, then don't do anything. Continue the transaction. That means the same record put it into the same file. Okay, so that is a use of continue transaction. So in my case, what happens is first first record will come into expression. Then in the expression, the expression will be one dot XML. And this will go to hierarchy builder, it will create an XML file and coming to the transaction control. First, it will check the field underscore file and the output will be one dot XML. So one dot XML commit before because the field value doesn't change because the commit before. Uh, that means it is going to create a new transaction. That means one dot XML file will get created and it will write to the target. Now coming to the target, you can see I have used one underscore file name. So if you want to see, uh, you have to generate dynamic file name option here. So I create new at runtime, you can see user dynamic file name. Okay. So if you want to exclude the dynamic file name field, you can exclude if you don't want that in the target output file. Now when uh, one dot XML got created, whenever the next week or two dot XML comes, that means two record product or two will come. And here in the expression, my output will be two dot XML and it will come to hierarchy builder and coming to the transaction control. So as I mentioned in the condition, if the field value changes, which field won't score file name, you can see two dot XML. 1.xml before 1.xml now it is 2.xml so if the field value changes what i have to do commit before that means commit the 1.xml file and then open a new file that which is 2.xml okay so commit before will get executed and 2.xml file will get created at the target now let me rerun the mapping So this is a 1.xml file, so product code is 1, so that's the reason, so it got created and you can see the underscore file name for the first file is 1.xml. If you want to exclude this underscore file name in the target output file, you can choose that option at the target, exclude the uh, dynamic file name. Now 2.xml you can see, so product code and this is separate file. So here we are able to achieve like multiple records, we are able to create multiple xml files based on one condition. Here I have used a product code. In your condition, if product code is not a primary key, you can use variable port and you can generate multiple dynamic XML files. The references for you is you can go through this document which talks about hierarchy builder transformation and as well as a transaction control in order to know more about it or else our info support channel. Now, we would love to hear from you. Like you can give me your feedback at support at informatica.com or else info support. Thank you for watching this video.